This is the mysterious case of the three lost boys from Hannibal. And this case on the 10th of this month, on the 10th of May, it hit 52 years old, over half a century old, and it is still nowhere closer to being solved. The three missing boys in this case are Billy Hogue, 10 years old, his older brother, Joey Hogue, 13 years old, and a neighbor friend of theirs, Craig Dow, 14 years old. These three boys were not troublemakers, but they were quite adventurous. The Hogue boys came from a rather large family. There were their parents, Mike and Helen Hogue, and 11 children. The family was quite well known in the area. The area I'm referring to is Hannibal, Missouri, a city on the Mississippi River. Hannibal is most known for being the city where famous writer Mark Twain moved at the age of four years old and grew up. The area inspired many of his novels. Hannibal is most known for that, but is also, of course, known for the mystery of the three lost boys. These three boys themselves lived on the south side of Hannibal. This was 1967, and there just really wasn't a lot to do. I mean, yes, there was TV back then, but that took up a small portion of people's time. And this had to do with three young boys living in Missouri. And their favorite thing to do was go exploring, and one of their favorite places to go exploring was caves. Their parents were not too fond of this idea. They didn't like the fact that their young boys liked to go exploring in very dangerous places such as caves. On the evening of May 9th, 1967, the Hogue boys were scolded by their parents because they got home rather late. Anytime they went out exploring, usually they would be home by dinner time, and this time they were home a little bit later. They kind of missed dinner, and when they walked in the house, they were covered in mud. Their parents told the boys that yes, they can still go outside and play, but they're not allowed to leave the yard. Their older sister, Dee Dee, who was 16 years old in 1967, said that that was just what her and all her siblings liked to do. They liked to be outside, they liked to go on adventures, and one of their favorite places to go exploring was a place called Lover's Leap. When brothers Joey and Billy would go exploring together, they were usually fully equipped. They would bring their family's aluminum ladder to help them reach high up cave entrances, they'd bring snacks to last them hours, and they'd of course bring flashlights with them. Hannibal, Missouri had smaller caves, but they also had very large ones as well, ones that were quite easy to get lost in, especially for children, no matter how experienced they are when it comes to venturing through caves. On May 10th, 1967, they went against their parents' wishes. They left the yard. They went out on an adventure and they were never heard from again. When Mike and Helen Hogue got home that evening, they realized that Joey and Billy were nowhere to be found in the house. And it was just coincidental to them that the two boys that had gotten in trouble the day before were now nowhere. So they asked the rest of their children, where are your brothers? Where are Joey and Billy at? And no one had seen them in hours. And Dee Dee told her parents that she had told Joey that they were not allowed to leave the yard. And it looks like, of course, they did. Like I said, Billy and Joey came from a pretty large family. They had nine other siblings and then their parents. So 11 people had gone out searching for them that night. And they couldn't find them anywhere. And then not long after, it came to everybody's attention that a neighborhood boy named Craig Dowell was also missing. So everybody put two and two together and were like, well, Craig was friends with Joey and Billy and they would go on adventures once in a while. So they all went missing on the same day. Apparently they went out together and something happened. Someone came forward saying that they had seen the boys going into Murphy's cave. This is a photo of Murphy's cave in May 1967. During this time, the cave was being worked on. Search crews went over the inside of the cave with a fine tooth comb. They went through cavern after cavern, trying to find some evidence of what happened to the boys. Anything, anything at all, but they never did. Sometimes when people go missing, authorities and locals don't really put in much time to trying to find them. They just figure that Maybe they're runaways or maybe they'll show up eventually, but with this case, 
People really tried their hardest to try to find these boys. According to 14-year-old Lynn Stroob, she said that she saw the boys heading towards Murphy's Cave on May 10th, 1967, the day that they disappeared, around 4.30 p.m. And she said that they had shovels and a flashlight with them. Because of that, most of the search was focused on this one cave, one with a huge cave system. Once the three boys were officially declared missing, the Mark Twain Emergency Squad began in the search first, and then it turned into a nationwide rescue mission. Expert cavers from all around the country took time out of their lives to go to Hannibal, Missouri to help in the search. Local restaurants even gave cavers free meals because of their efforts. This was the only thing being talked about in Hannibal at the time. Most people keeping hope alive, not realizing that it would remain a mystery for 52 years. After the third day of searching, people began to think, maybe the boys are not in Murphy's cave. Maybe they did a little exploring there and went into another cave. There were also a lot of smaller unmapped caves in the area, and also at the time they were doing construction on Highway 79, and they had several sealed caves along it, and they feared maybe they sealed the boys inside one of these smaller caves. So they began unsealing these caves, but still found nothing. They didn't only search caves though, they also searched rivers, lakes, abandoned homes, and even train cars. They searched every train car of trains that had left Hannibal after 4.30 p.m. on May 10th because there was a theory that arose that possibly the boys decided to run away from home. Nothing was found on any of the trains though. This was a massive and very expensive search. Psychics from all around the country contacted rescue officials with their premonitions, but these never helped much. One supposed psychic said she saw a premonition where the boys were locked in a train car filled with oranges bound for an unknown location in the United States. They couldn't do much with this information though, and near the end of June 1967, most of the searching stopped. Like I said before, the main witness who apparently saw where the boys were heading the day that they went missing was 14 years old. And like I've mentioned before in other videos, sometimes children or teenagers, sometimes adults, will come forward with eyewitness accounts or supposed stories of what happened just to try to be included. But there is one thing that kind of shows that she might have been telling the truth because most of the time, probably about 90% of the time that Joey and Billy went on these little cave exploring adventures, they would usually bring their family's aluminum ladder. After the boys disappeared, the Hoag's ladder was found in their basement. So obviously the boys did not bring it with them that day. And when Lynn said she had seen the boys going towards Murphy's cave, she said that all she saw that they had with them was shovels and a flashlight. There's no way that she would have known that the boys didn't bring a ladder with them that day. So this kind of leans towards her telling the truth. According to one boy who went to school with Joey and Billy, he said that in school the day of May 10th, Joey and Billy were basically telling everybody that they were going caving after school and their friend Greg was originally going to go. He said, I went home and planned on going. I walked outside and the girls were jumping rope. There were seven girls on my street and I was the only guy. I'm doing that and I get ready to go and I don't even get 50 feet from the house Grandma hollered, supper's ready. Dee Dee was the main one out of all the siblings who had seen Joey and Billy after school, and when she saw them, it kind of looked like they were getting ready to leave the house, and she asked Joey, where are you going? And he said, outside. And she said, okay, that's fine. You're allowed to go outside, but just don't leave the yard. And they did just that, they left the yard. Dee Dee said that she hopes with the advancements in technology and how far technology has come that they can eventually find their bodies somewhere. She said that her and her family would stay up for hours and hours every night for months just waiting for the boys to come home. She went on to explain how it affected her mentally, saying, I couldn't eat, I couldn't sleep, I felt that they would be cold and they would be hungry and you know, I just couldn't let myself do anything. I was so stressed out. There isn't a day that goes by that I don't think about my brothers and where in the world they are. 
In today's time, there's a memorial for the three boys at Lover's Leap, the place where the Hogue boys love to explore the most. In the year 2006, they were building a new elementary school off of Highway 79, and construction workers came across a 50-foot cave, one that they had no idea was there. So this kind of sparked their interest, and they decided to search the cave to see if maybe, just maybe, the boys from all those years before were in this cave, buried somewhere. But they didn't find anything. This case really changed the way that people all throughout Hannibal and Missouri and along the Mississippi River thought about everyday life. People were way more cautious. Most people do believe that they were trapped inside of a cave and if it wasn't Murphy's cave, it possibly could have been a smaller one along Highway 79 because they were doing construction on Highway 79 at this point and a lot of the cave systems were very fragile and if somebody were inside of them, they could have collapsed at any time. There are some people in the area who claimed that the mayor kind of disregarded the theory that the boys could have got trapped in a cave off of Highway 79. Most likely, most people think, because he didn't want to face a lawsuit. This honestly isn't too far-fetched that the boys maybe went to Murphy's cave and then decided to go to another one off of Highway 79 and this would have been a perfect opportunity for them to do that because Lynn Strube said she saw them around 4.30 and construction workers would have got off around 5. So maybe they got to these caves around 5, saw that the construction workers were getting off of work and they saw this as a perfect opportunity to go exploring. Their bodies could be in a location somewhere where their family members walked past for decades afterwards. Spend 50 years wondering what happened to your brothers and their bodies could be trapped inside of a cave that you drive past while you're driving down Highway 79 every single day. There wasn't really a lot of information about Craig Dowell online. I couldn't really find any family interviews, but I did see that he left behind three brothers when he disappeared. Some of the Hoag siblings still live in Hannibal, Missouri, still to this day, and they just hope and pray that they can eventually find their remains to give them a proper burial and that this case can finally have a resolution. If I had to give my opinion, I feel like the theory that is most far-fetched and unbelievable is that they ran away. It's too ironic because apparently they were telling people in school on the day of May 10th that they were going caving after school. They didn't tell anybody that they were planning on disappearing and leaving their lives behind. There were no signs that they were unhappy in life. The only thing was that they got scolded by their parents and that's not enough reason for them to leave their happy life behind, in my opinion. The Hogue boys came from a very loving family and like I said before, they were not troublemakers, but they did, you know, like any children, sometimes not listen to their parents when they're supposed to. It does seem that the boys were just going to do something very, very dangerous and unfortunately it resulted in their demise. But like always, let me know your opinions down below in the comments and I will see you all in my next video. Bye guys.